Hi, my name is David Warner Matheson, and for the past 12 years, I've been exploring the connection between the myths and the stars, and the overwhelming evidence which shows that virtually all the world's ancient myths, scriptures, and sacred stories from every inhabited continent and island on our Earth are built on a common foundation of celestial metaphor in which the characters and events described in the myths can be shown to be patterned on specific constellations with specific shared characteristics across cultures and across oceans, showing that they're all in some way closely related. This system of celestial metaphor is extremely ancient and can already be seen to be fully developed in the earliest surviving texts we have from ancient civilizations, including the cuneiform tablets of ancient Mesopotamia and the pyramid texts of ancient Egypt and the Vedas of ancient India. The parallels between the mythological figures of various cultures are striking, even when separated by vast oceans and by centuries or even millennia of time, suggesting that the various sacred traditions around the globe may be descended from some common source of extreme antiquity, a source so ancient that it was as ancient to the cultures of Egypt or Sumer as those cultures are ancient to us, or even perhaps more distant to them than ancient Egypt is to us in the 21st century. I've already demonstrated both in published books and in videos the astonishing parallels between the depiction of the god Zeus with his thunderbolt, for example, and the thunder and lightning gods of the ancient Maya, and the unmistakable evidence which demonstrates that these gods of sky and storm are associated with the constellation Hercules in the heavens. A constellation very often associated with the most powerful god in the pantheons of various cultures. The outline of the constellation Hercules is very distinctive and features a deep lunge body posture with the forward knee in a deep bend and the rear leg extended with the heel raised. One arm reaches forward while the other arm arches over the back to brandish a weapon, often a powerful weapon associated with lightning or thunder, such as the thunderbolt of the god Zeus in ancient Greece and notice the similarity to the thunderbolt carried by the god depicted in this surviving Maya codex, or to the Vajra associated with the god Indra in ancient India, or thunderbolts depicted in surviving relief sculpture from ancient Mesopotamia. Recently, a YouTube viewer named Rick B. left a comment on one of my videos in which he linked to another video from the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City where a Maya cup is on display and Rick wrote this comment quote I just saw this video of an ancient Maya cup when I noticed the bend of the rain god's knees I recalled your teaching what do you suppose end quote my response is well spotted Rick you're absolutely right that the rain god depicted in the beautiful artwork on this vessel is portrayed with very clear and distinctive aspects characteristic of the constellation Hercules in common with other sky and storm and rain gods found in other cultures around the world, including some we've already mentioned, such as ancient Greece and ancient India, and also the Norse myths. I would argue that this Maya vessel provides yet further incontrovertible evidence for the existence of an ancient worldwide system of celestial metaphor which underlies the ancient myths of cultures on every inhabited continent and island and which probably all descend from some common source of extreme antiquity predating ancient Egypt, ancient India, and ancient Sumer. Let's take a closer look. The piece itself is from the late classic Maya period and comes from the region of El Mirador and Nakbe in what is today Guatemala. This region contains some of the very earliest 
and largest Maya settlements and is thought to have been first occupied by the Maya around 1400 BC. An article by Luis Lopez discussing these finely painted ceramics states that, quote, the region is of great importance to the genesis of the Maya culture and may have remained as an important mythic landscape for the late classic Maya, end quote. These vessels only began to come to light in the 1950s through the 1970s, and their origin has been determined using neutron activation analysis to determine the chemical composition of the clay used to produce them and to trace it to the Nakbe El Mirador region in northern Guatemala. Scholars apparently date this cup to the 7th or 8th century AD, which means the 600s to the 700s, with some sources placing the date around AD 750. The vessel is on display in the Metropolitan Museum of Art in Gallery 358. The accession number of this artifact, which you can use to search for it online, is 1978.412.206. Here's what the Metropolitan Museum of Art has to say about this vessel in its online display. Quote, This cylindrical drinking vessel is the magnum opus of the Maya vase painter known as the Metropolitan Master. It contains one of the finest extant deity portraits from the classic Maya corpus. The young rain god, named Chalk, poses mid-stride, lifting off his left foot and extending the right leg in front of him, gracefully pointing his toes. The underside of each leg is marked with a scale pattern evoking a shimmering and wet aquatic creature. He wears a complex loincloth that shows the typical knotted cotton of his costuming, and the rear panel of the loincloth contorts as if the artist was referencing a fishtail. The necklace of chalk is quite unique. The collar consists of pendant extruded eyeballs, and the pectoral is in the shape of an upside-down water jar marked with a hieroglyph for darkness, with what looks like a small serpent emerging from its mouth. His other jewels on the ankles and wrists may be jade or another precious metal, and his headdress is a tangle of watery vegetation. The typical shell earrings accent the barbel, extending from the nostril and projecting off the god's chin. His human-like quality is emphasized by the artist's brush strokes in the distinguished profile of the face, the point of the elbow, the ankle joints, and finger and toenails. In his right hand, he grasps the wooden handle of a shining stone axe, and his left hand holds an animate stone." End quote. Personally, I find the attempts to twist the artist's intent into watery directions may be a bit of a stretch, but setting that aside, there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that the artist of this vessel, which was created many centuries before the European invasion, is employing the very same system of celestial metaphor in the depiction of the god Chalk as well as the other elements of the scene, which is found in artwork around the world, the same conventions found in artwork around the world, and which is part of this same ancient worldwide system which underlies the myths and scriptures of virtually every culture on our planet, as well as informing ancient artwork from ancient Mesopotamia to India to Egypt to Japan to the Americas. As the insightful Rick B. noticed when he was watching the video from scholars at the Metropolitan Museum of Art discuss this Maya vessel, the posture of the god Chalk is without doubt patterned upon the constellation Hercules in the night sky, the very constellation with which other rain and storm gods from other cultures around the globe can be shown to be associated. Let's look at the details which indicate that this depiction of chalk evokes the distinctive features of the constellation Hercules. First is the overall outline and posture of the god. 
the distinctive characteristics of the outline of the constellation Hercules include that deeply bent front leg that we discussed, the extended rear leg with heel raised, one arm brandishing a powerful weapon over the back of the constellation while the other arm reaches downward or forward, we can easily see that chalk displays almost all of these characteristics without any question, including deeply bent front leg, extended rear leg with raised heel, brandishing a weapon over his back, in this case an axe, and reaching forward with his other arm, which grasps a circular or arc-shaped object. The fact that chalk is carrying an axe is extremely noteworthy. Some gods associated with the constellation Hercules carry a thunderbolt, as we've mentioned, such as the god Zeus, also the god Indra, who wields the mighty Vajra, also the god Ninurta of Mesopotamia, who wields a very similar thunderbolt weapon. Other figures associated with the constellation Hercules carry a great club, such as the hero Heracles, or Hercules himself. Some carry a great mace, such as the hero Beam in the Mahabharata of ancient India. Other figures associated with the constellation Hercules carry a hammer, such as the famous hammer of the god Thor, named Mjolnir. And please note that a hammer and an axe have very much the same outline. In fact, there is a thunder god from the Yoruba culture of Africa, the god Shango, or Shango, who carries a mighty axe. Thus, the fact that Chalk is carrying an axe shares a commonality with the axe of Shango and with the related weapons of other thunder and rain gods and of heroes associated with the constellation Hercules from other cultures worldwide. Now, the reaching forward arm is grasping a circular object described in the museum text as an animate stone. This fact may be one of the most conclusive aspects of the artwork which identifies chalk with the stars of the heavens because figures associated with the constellation Hercules often grasp an arc-shaped object. And the reason is that not far from the forward or downward reaching arm of Hercules in the heavens we find the beautiful arc of stars known as Corona Borealis, literally the crown of the north, which we also often refer to in English as the northern crown. We can see that the lower arm of Hercules only requires one additional imagined line to be reaching out and grasping the northern crown. We find images of Heracles grasping an arc-shaped object in many pieces of surviving artwork from ancient Greece, such as this one, where he's grasping the arc of an opponent's helmet crest, or this one, where he's grasping the horn of the head of a bull-headed god, sometimes described as the god Achelous. I've also published extensive analysis which shows that in the story of the Judgment of Solomon in the Old Testament of the Bible, the baby held aloft by the swordsman at the command of the king can be seen to be associated with the northern crown. And there are many other examples from other myths around the world of a Hercules figure grasping something that has to do with the northern crown. And that is why this Maya vessel from the 7th or 8th century depicting the god Chalk grasping this circular stone is so important and constitutes such powerful additional evidence that there was once an ancient system which somehow informs the ancient myths of virtually every culture on earth and shows that they're all related to one another in some presently unexplained way. A fact which totally overthrows the conventional paradigm of human history and indicates that our understanding of the ancient past is in need of radical revision. The museum text also calls attention to the twisting extended panel of the loincloth of the god, which ends in a kind of tuft that the writer of that museum text says 
is an attempt to indicate a kind of a fish's tail. Well, I would say that the fish tail interpretation is a stretch. The fact that the extended piece or panel of the loincloth ends in a tuft is incontestable. Now, what figures associated with the constellation Hercules have we seen whose artistic depictions in ancient surviving artwork feature a similar article of clothing? Well, I've already shown some in this video. The hero Heracles or Hercules is almost invariably depicted wearing a lion pelt as his garment, the tail of which often extends outward from his waist or his hip in exactly the same manner as the extra panel of the loincloth seen in the depiction of the god Chalk from the Maya drinking vessel. And as I've already explained in previously published writing, the tuft of the tail of that lion corresponds to the location of the bright star Vega, which is located in the constellation Lyra, the lyre, very close to the constellation Hercules, but on the other side of the constellation from the northern crown. In fact, I've also written in my 2020 book, Myth and Trauma, that the constellation Lyra may sometimes be envisioned as part of the weapon held by the mythological figures who are associated with Hercules, including in the double-headed thunderbolts held by some of the gods associated with Hercules. And it must be pointed out, the axe head of the weapon held by Chalk in this depiction is actually located in the vicinity of the constellation Lyra. But the important thing to note is this feature of the loincloth, which includes that kind of tuft in the location of the star Vega, just as we see in the ancient depictions of Hercules or Heracles in ancient artwork from cultures a half a world away from the Maya. Clearly, these artistic conventions are related in some way. This is not an accidental coincidence, and we would not expect these artistic conventions to just spring up on their own without any connection whatsoever. Here's another piece of ancient artwork about which I've spoken and written extensively. It's known as the Pylos or Pylos Combat Agate. I say Pylos, and it was only recently discovered in 2017 in an undisturbed tomb in the vicinity of the ancient city of Pylos. The Pylos Combat Agate is an absolutely amazing piece of ancient artwork, probably Minoan in origin. It's only 3.7 centimeters wide, and yet the artwork engraved on the agate is of incredibly high artistic quality and features incredibly lifelike detail. Look at the ribs and the musculature and the patterns on the clothing of the combatants in the scene. The grave in which the Pylos combat agate was found is known as the Tomb of the Griffin Warrior, and it has been dated to around the year 1500 BC, which means the tomb itself is over 3500 years old. The agate and its artwork may be even older. We don't know, but it's at least that ancient. As I perceived the moment that the first photographs of this incredible artwork were released to the world, the scene on the Pylos combat agate is celestial in nature. Once again, we have a clear correspondence to the outline of the constellation Hercules in this triumphant warrior at the top of the scene, who I call the swordsman in the image to distinguish him from the other combatants, such as the spearman just below, to whom the swordsman is about to render a fatal blow. Note that the swordsman also has a bent forward leg, an extended rear leg, a raised heel, and he's brandishing his sword over his back with one hand while reaching forward with the other hand. And oh, look what he's grasping with his forward hand, an arced object. In this case, the crest of the helmet of the spearman. Undoubtedly, a direct correspondence to the constellation Hercules, whose forward arm is so often envisioned as grasping something associated with the northern crown, just in front of Hercules in the heavens. 
and notice that the ancient artist who carved this incredible scene has included a sword scabbard protruding from the waist of the swordsman with a ball-shaped tip at the end of the scabbard in exactly the right position to correspond to the star Vega in the heavens above. And that's just what we find in the image of chalk on the Maya drinking vessel on display in the Metropolitan Museum of Art. This correspondence and the others that I'm pointing out are compelling and indeed I would say conclusive evidence of an ancient system at work by which system the myths of cultures separated by vast distances and even by vast gulfs of time, centuries or even millennia, can be shown to be related, probably because they're all descended from some even more ancient predecessor, which predates even ancient Egypt, ancient Mesopotamia, ancient India. But right now, if you tried to argue that connection to the keepers of the conventional timeline of ancient history in the halls of academia in universities throughout the West, you'd be laughed at and showed the door and maybe even called some names. But that's not all we find in this incredible Maya vase. The forward foot of the constellation Hercules is positioned in the sky in a way that almost touches the top area of the constellation Ophiuchus, just below. The constellation Ophiuchus often plays characters in myth who are armed with a spear, as in the scene on the Pylos combat agate, for rather obvious reasons in the outline of the constellation Ophiuchus itself. But Ophiuchus can also play the role of a great mountain. And this is extremely common in myths around the globe, which are all using this ancient worldwide system, which I've written about in books, now totaling over 5,000 pages and including many hundreds of diagrams and star charts and examples of ancient artwork. So let's see where Chalk is placing his forward foot in the artwork on the Maya drinking vessel, which is from before the European invasion of the Americas. Returning to the museum text, we read, quote, The rain god, that is to say the rain god Chalk, actively engages with a giant Agnathus creature, likely the representation of a wits, the spirit of a mountain. As his leg crosses in front of the upper lip, while his left arm passes behind. It is as if the rain personified needs to partake in a ritual combative dance with an animate mountain to set the actions presented here in motion. The mountain monster has a feathered eyelid present on crocodilians in Maya art, a jagged tooth, and liquid or vegetation spilling on the ground line at Chalk's feet. The head of the mountain is covered with the grape bunch markings that signify that it is a stony place." End quote. So Chalk's forward foot is stepping upon the jaws of an animate mountain, a wits or spirit of a mountain. This fact is perfectly in keeping with what I've demonstrated in other mythology around the globe in which Ophiuchus is envisioned as a mountain, and also mythology in which Ophiuchus is envisioned as having gaping jaws as well. I've discussed in my 2018 book, Star Myths of the World, Volume 4, for example, Volume 4 is Norse mythology, that the gaping jaws of Fenris, or Fenrir, the wolf, who will swallow Odin on the day of Ragnarok, can be confidently demonstrated to correspond to the constellation Ophiuchus. In other words, this artwork on this Maya cup has numerous undeniable connections to the system of celestial metaphor that I've found to be at work in the mythology of cultures literally around the world. I've also shown beyond any doubt in previous videos and in my 2016 book, Star Myths of the World, Volume 3, Star Myths of the Bible, that the figure of David in the Old Testament is associated with the constellation Hercules in the heavens, which is why David plays the harp or lyre, since Hercules is located right next to Lyra in the heavens, as we saw earlier. 
Here's an artistic depiction of David about to slay the giant Goliath using Goliath's own enormous sword. Can you see how the artist has depicted David in an outline corresponding to the constellation Hercules, brandishing a mighty weapon over his back? And note the position of David's legs. One is bent and one is extended behind him with the heel raised. And where is that forward leg positioned? It's stepping right on the temple of the giant Goliath, whom David is about to slay, just as the swordsman in the Pylos combat agate is about to slay the spearman below, associated with Ophiuchus, as is Goliath associated with Ophiuchus. The main point I'm trying to show is the positioning of the foot of the Hercules figure in this painting. In, that's a clear parallel to the positioning of the foot of the god Chalk in the Maya vessel, because Chalk is associated with the constellation Hercules, and the Wits, or the animate mountain, is associated with Ophiuchus, just like in the David story, David is associated with Hercules, and Goliath, whom he's stepping on in this artwork, is associated with Ophiuchus, can be shown to be associated with Ophiuchus. And by the way, the main weapon that Goliath is described as carrying in the text of the Bible itself is a spear, which is associated with Ophiuchus figures in the myths around the world. There are more, many more celestial elements in this incredible piece of pre-Columbian Maya artwork, but these are the strongest parallels and the easiest to demonstrate. Just with these, we've seen so many and such clear correspondences to the constellations and to the other myths around the world that I've analyzed from other cultures that it should be enough to definitively establish the argument that the Maya were using the same system that we find in forming the myths of other cultures around the world. It's a system that's based on celestial metaphor in which specific constellations are associated with the same consistent characteristics from one culture to another. The fact that chalk is a rain god who's associated with the constellation Hercules is extremely noteworthy because we see other rain gods and storm gods associated with the constellation Hercules in other ancient cultures, most notably Indra of ancient India and Zeus of ancient Greece and Thor of the Norse pantheon and Shango of the Yoruba of Africa. You'd think that information like this would be considered to be incredibly important by academia, but I've found absolutely no interest so far from those whom you would think would find this information to be very interesting. So instead of writing a scholarly article about the obvious connections in this Maya drinking vessel and the constellations in the heavens, I'm instead making this video and releasing it to the world. I'm sure that academics would be extremely interested in the undeniable celestial interpretation of the artwork on this cup, but they would balk at the connections that can be shown to the myths of other cultures around the globe, including cultures from other continents, such as culture of ancient India, ancient Mesopotamia, ancient Greece, the Norse, and so on. Those connections simply cannot be explained within the current narrative of human history. And yet, those connections are undeniable as I've demonstrated. And so, I'll continue to release this information outside of academia. So, if you know any professors of ancient history or of art history, including professors of Maya history or Maya art, please feel free to show them this video and point them to my website. Maybe they will be interested to learn about it, but I'm not holding my breath that the world of academia will change their paradigm very easily. Others have already demonstrated, primarily using evidence found in archaeology, including in ancient structures from around the world, that the conventional paradigm of human history is gravely flawed and in need of radical revision, and that there was almost certainly some very sophisticated culture which predates those 
that conventional history starts with by thousands of years and which appears to have had worldwide influence. And yet, even though courageous researchers such as Graham Hancock and Professor Robert Schock and others have been demonstrating this evidence for decades now, there's still the same resistance in the halls of academia to the argument that the conventional paradigm is wrong that there was back in the early 1990s, three decades ago. However, I continue to have confidence that the mounting tide of evidence will eventually break through the efforts of those who want to deny the evidence. We've seen this pattern many times in the past. The evidence that the world's ancient myths share a common foundation of celestial metaphor is just about as overwhelming, just about as compelling, and I am confident that the truth will eventually prevail. Thank you so much for watching.